What's up YouTube Linux Noob here with a quick update to my Peppermint OS 6 review that I did a couple of days back. Since then I've been using Peppermint OS 6 as my primary Linux distribution on my Linux desktop and so far absolutely love it. I discovered a few new things that I didn't notice before that much so I thought uh, I would dem demonstrate to you with this quick update. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first thing I would like to focus on is how I have customized it even further to um, like how I uh, want it or how I like it to be. Now, I have moved these panel from the bottom to the top and uh, in the bottom I've installed this a dock called Plank uh, really easy to do just a search on Google uh, with install Plank and it'll get the instructions it's just about uh, copying three lines of codes into the terminal and basically you are done I've chosen the Plank theme that I like and added all my shortcuts to the apps that I use on a daily basis really really helpful um, uh, app or doc whatever you call it so uh, that is the first thing and as I mentioned I have moved these panel to the top so and also removed all the desktop icons now the second thing I've done is uh, a little tweak in the terminal uh, by default it comes with the uh, black sorry by default it comes with a red kind of background I didn't like it that much so I have swapped it with these uh, black background although I've kept the transparency as it was before now the third thing is uh, the in the window manager theme uh, it is not what it comes by default in the last last video it was the default uh, window manager theme now I have uh, changed it to a theme called Menda now I have downloaded it from the internet and then changed it I'll quickly show you how to do that now if you like just um, install those themes into your system you'll get the options over here I have chosen this Menda theme I think they ship it with Manjaro Linux by default I quite liked it and as you can see it's now full black the window borders and the uh, buttons are a little bit different I quite like it so I have swapped out for it and uh, this is uh, another beauty of Peppermint OS 6 is basically you can customize it to however you want uh, in the last video the desktop was something completely different now it's com something uh, completed completely different to that one so of course so far liking it uh, very very much and that's exactly how I'm using uh, uh, like I have customized my desktop right now now the second thing I would like to focus on is a tool called ice now in my original video I did mention that uh, one of the main focus uh, behind these uh, distribution was to getting really the best out of the cloud uh, I did mention that but I said I'm not into that kind of things that much so I pretty much completely skipped the uh, features related to cloud that uh, this uh, distribution has uh, as something that really makes it unique and I, have, I haven't seen something like this uh, in any other distribution before uh, so far the distribution that I have gone through now uh, this ICE is a tool that they have created by themselves what this essentially does is it creates a shortcut uh, an HTML shortcut to the uh, directly to your menu so you have quickly uh, access you can quickly have access to that uh, web app uh, directly from your menu uh, it's really easy to use I'll quickly demonstrate it with YouTube I've already created a link with YouTube uh, what you do is you name the application what you want to show it uh, show up this one in the menu as and you name the application you choose the uh, sub menu and you pretty much enter the web address like if you want YouTube all you do is you type in uh, youtube.com over there and then you can select your own icon or you can use the sites icon itself 
click click apply and it's pretty much done now uh, during the last video uh, uh, ice only worked with chromium browser like uh, but uh, they have pushed a new update to it uh, and basically now it can run with chrome chromium and firefox all three browsers uh, right now i don't have firefox installed so uh, the the firefox button is grayed out there but uh, I can use both Chrome and Chromium and uh, for YouTube I'm using Chrome because that's my go-to browser I'll quickly show you uh, how it's done basically so uh, once you create the shortcut you'll get it uh, right in the sub menu over there and you click it you're directly onto the page now you might ask like of course you can visit the site and use the web app directly from your browser as well uh, like this one and directly have access to this then uh, why even use uh, something like this well first of all it's really easy and uh, it makes the whole process a bit faster if you have direct shortcuts for in your menu directly and also one more thing of course I'm I'm not that much concerned to be honest what's going in the background and uh, really if it's running a tiny bit faster or not uh, I'm not really into that as a daily user from a user's perspective of course I know the developers has put a, a lot of effort into the app itself creating the back end and everything related to it but uh, one major factor that I found uh, as a an user immediately was when you're using uh, uh, an any web app through a browser uh, you have to deal with these uh, borders of course the address bar and the uh, system border that it de by default comes with so every time you will have that feeling that you are inside the browser but what this does it it sort of gives you a native app kind of feeling of course it's by no means a native app but it sort of gives you that feeling because you don't have to deal with that address bar anymore and of course what it does is uh, gives you more real estate for the the content and the app itself and not uh, for the other cluttering borders and other address bars or something like that so definitely if you are uh, like if you have those three to four sites that you visit on a regular basis definitely take advantage of it it's a great tool personally i'm not uh, that much into it i generally prefer going to the browser but of course for youtube and uh i think two or three more sites i'll have links to that uh, of course because it it is really really a great tool if you're into it definitely take advantage of it in my original video I pretty much completely skipped on uh, to this feature and one of the Peppermint developers uh, very kindly pointed that out that at least I should uh, mention it once in the review because although I personally don't use it other people might find it interesting and it's one of the main focuses of the OS itself so I, th I thought I should definitely include it into the update so there you have it now the third thing that I would like to point out is a small bug. It's not something groundbreaking but um, there's something I noticed. Uh, now I'm using Peppermint on my Linux desktop. I'm not using it on a laptop. It's installed on my desktop. So uh, in desktop I really don't need the power icon. So uh, when I look over here on the icons you'll notice that there is a blank space over there now if you right click on it you'll actually realize that it's not blank at all uh, uh, if you click on preferences you'll find that this is the power management that it brings up the power management preferences window so it's basically the power management icon or the power icon but it's not being displayed properly but it's there uh, what I actually did before was I chose not to display the icon because obviously in a desktop PC I don't need that need that all the time uh, because there is no battery involved or anything like that so uh, and by default it is uh, like it, it is set to always display the icon now if I go and do this the icon comes back and if I again set it to not to display the icon 
it just goes out no problem right there but the problem is every single time you restart that blank space will be there like the power button just comes back every single time and you have to manually do it every time to get rid of it uh, so that is a small bug that I found not something major or deal breaking but it's definitely there so and I noticed it uh, on a daily basis so uh, I said th I thought it should be something I point out so that is pretty much it for this update uh, so far I've been loving peppermint OS 6 as I mentioned already a couple of times this is now my go-to uh, Linux distribution I have been recommending this to all of my friends I personally installed and this on three of my friends laptops and they have been using it and enjoying it as well they have customized it to how they like it and so far enjoying it if you're in the Linux world definitely give it a try I absolutely recommend it to anyone and everyone to at least give it a try it's such a great uh, the Linux distribution and I think, uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best out there right now. So that is pretty much it for the video. Like the video if you like it. Dislike the video if you disliked it. Leave your feedback in the comment section. Also, if you want me to check out something in specific, leave that in the comments as well. If you have any questions related to Peppermint OS or Linux in general, uh, ask me. I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability and subscribe to the channel for more video on uh, Linux see you in the next video